if you can't work out consistently and eat healthily without goals yes you're not you're not in a position to like cut and bulk and do all these like aesthetic adventures and stuff like right you need to be able to just like i consistently exercise and i consistently eat healthy and i don't have a single path or direction i want to go like i'm just simply doing it for health Mm -hmm. that is like the baseline and it's like you need to get to there before you start doing these other things You know what I hate? I feel like I've already said this before. ASMR. I feel like you said that the last time we cracked something on here. Ugh. Disgusting. What do you got? Tequila over there? I wish. No. You drink it on the job? Again, like I said, I wish. You know what sounds really good? Tell me. A protein bar. Ugh, no. So no. I have a protein shake right here, and I'm like, protein bar. I love them. That is nothing for me. No. Like, it's like, even if it's like, oh, I want something chocolate or I want something sweet and I would have that. It's like, no, I'd rather have nothing. They're just too, like, chalky to me. They're the best. They're the best. But that's the same thing with protein powder. Like, I don't like them just as drinks, typically. Oh, just like protein powder and yeah. water or milk? Yeah. Yeah. It just always has a proteiny taste. It's like you can say chocolate fudge, whatever, but it's a protein chocolate <laughs> but fudge. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's freaking not. <laughs> it's like the uh, trying to give your kid a pill, but you're like hiding it in bread or something. That's what my mom always used to do. It's like I know what's in here. That's so scary. Scary. Yeah, because you're just, like, teaching your kid to, like, not find random pills hidden in things. (laughs) (laughs) It's, like, you're just, like, prepping your kid to be drugged all the time. I remember one time my mom was trying, like, for some reason I just had a problem swallowing pills whole. I got over that problem. I grew up. But. I went. Okay, yeah. But I remember she, like, was, like, here, I'll just give you, like, pieces of bread and just, like, practice swallow the bread. And that's even harder i feel like no it was way easier because it was softer and but thinking like, of swallowing a chunk of bread without ch- like that would mess with me because i would have it in my mouth i'd be like i have to chew it no that like was, i couldn't just yeah no that, it worked worked for what? me what but i remember she was, <laughs> she was giving me the pieces of bread and then i grabbed the next one i'm like Mom, I know the pills in this one. <laughs> and she's like, well, you're not supposed to know. I'm like, well, you did not do a good job of hiding it. <laughs> oh, that it's the only so one funny. that's like crumpled up into a ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's what she was doing. She was crumpling them, like making them into ball. Yeah. Oh, which did you ever do that? With bread. Oh, my God. Carly and I did that all the time. Uh, you peel the crust off the piece of bread and then you roll the bread into a ball and then just like bite it. Oh, my I- God. I've seen people do it, but no. Such Never done it to myself. That is know. such a you thing. To do that? Oh, yeah. It's like, it, it's going to taste the same, whether it's you just eat the piece of bread or not. But like making it the into a different, may be different thing. Yeah. yeah. No, I never did that. Yeah, we used to do that. But like, I wasn't really just like eating like bread. Like I wasn't eating bread. Yeah, we were. Like, pe- I would have like peanut butter jelly fun. sandwiches <laughs> all the time, but you're not going to crumble that up. In that was our ball. fun. <laughs> just finding food and different ways to eat it. <laughs> That's what we did for fun. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, it was a good time. But I see the concept. I've seen people do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why we did that, but it's funny. That's one of those things I'm surprised that my mom didn't get into, like as we were growing up. You know, she did like every- bread making. Yeah, she did everything. I think she, well, she did, banana bread and that sort of thing, but not like the sourdough bread that we tend to do now. That I don't know. Yeah, maybe she did. Maybe she did growing up or something and. I feel like like she's just more into the sweets. Like, she doesn't really get into a lot of, like, I guess the canning and that stuff. But as far as, like, baking goes or cooking, it doesn't seem like she's really into, like, cooking or that kind of stuff. It's more like the the sweets, like the desserts and cookies and the bars. I don't know. She does all of it. Well, she does it, but is it, like, 
to me, I don't think she cooks or bakes to the extent with the, like, savory things versus the sweet things. Like, it seems like the sweet things is really where she, like, gets into Can it. Can I be honest with you? I have no idea the difference between savory and sweet. Everybody has this conversation of which do you prefer more. It's one of those things that has just, I've never learned what the differences are. I think savory is, like, more like the salty-based things. I know, but to me or it's like, like I'm not salty, but um. See, you don't even know. Nobody knows what savory and sweet are. Nobody has a clue. They just say stuff they don't know, and then we all act well, like we know. Well, because I'm trying to think of like on. a good example where you'd have both at the same. Well, isn't it something like chocolate or chips or something, or are those that the same thing? I think that would be in the same category. What? Those are so different. It's like, do you like chocolate? Like, would you like fudge or a lemon bar? I think the savory would be more. Let's look it up. Savory definition. Savory, I would think, would, is the chocolate because sweet. Okay, is yeah, not- yeah, okay. Of food belonging to the category that is salty or spicy rather than sweet. Oh, so it's not salty and. Or it's not sweet and say sa- no, it is sweet versus savory. Right. Oh, I think they typically go salty versus sweet. Yes, but you could do the same like thing, like savory or salty to me. Yeah. See, just people saying shit that have no, nobody knows what this is. Or I see like whole like yeah, and I think how I would see savory is something that's a little bit more like denser or like one of those like i think it like like cheesecake is probably savory or like you said like fudge and like chocolate something a little bit more like rich or on the palate like you know when you this is so not gonna connect with you at all but like the color schemes like how you have all warm colors and cool colors like cools are like blues and greens where warms are like reds and oranges it's almost like that's how you'd see it like these are like salty and something with a lot of maybe carbs like carby or dense or um yeah more of that like mouthfeel foods to where the sweet could be yeah like the fruit type flavors or the very sugary type flavors or the sours mm. i'm definitely more the salty savory then yeah i am too what no you're not if it's compared to those two yes i am Really? Yeah. Why do I always want the chocolate and you always get the Mike and Ike's? Because I like the contrast. I like having both. Oh, you're. I like. Contrast. I'm the savory and sweet. I like both. But if I'm gonna choose something like, I mean, I don't like for food. Like, like, I would like something that's more dense and a little bit saltier than. Like I would. Yeah. What would be like a sweet food? Like, well, even that, like, like I typically would choose like vegetables over fruit. Not anymore, but like typically oh. that's what I'd eat. Or yeah, see that I'm the opposite. Like, yeah, I'm trying to think of that in food because there's not a lot of like sweet versus sweet savory. type things. Yeah. Well, when, like, like I think of like salad dressings. Like I would rather have like a French dressing, like a ranch or something a little bit thicker than like a raspberry vinaigrette oh yeah see i think i'm that i'd rather have like cheese and salty like to make like something a little bit saltier versus like fruit and a like really sugary dressing and sugared walnuts in it or something i'd rather have the yeah yeah i'm with you there but other than that i guess i don't really know yeah Yeah, which is weird though because i think I don't know. I don't know. I do think girls, I this is a hypothesis that I had. Yeah. That I think the reason girls that suck. girls are more overweight than guys is because we tend to choose the sweeter foods that tend to have more sugar in it. Like I was watching when we were going to Key West, I was watching like food review videos and stuff. And it was this couple that went and every time they went somewhere, she was getting like the dessert thing. Like they went to a crepe place. Yeah. She got the one with whipped cream and chocolate and the strawberry syrup. He got one that had like the like it was like the Italian one that had like salami in it and cheese. 
that, that I think girls I choose more of the, something there. the sweet things, but those things have more sugar in it. You know what I think my hypothesis would be of that? Why? Which do we even really know that? Are more girls overweight than I'm just going based overweight? off of looks, what I see around everywhere. Okay. <laughs> If that is the case, my hypothesis of that would be because women typically have a worse relationship with food and eating than than men do. There's more like of that bad relationship happening than than guys. I think it's okay. So I think it's what we choose to eat, what our palate typically goes for are like sweet things, candies, chocolates, pastries, types of things. Like I think of like going to a like a bakery. I don't mm-hmm. think a lot of guys would be like, I'm going to get the cinnamon roll or the something like that. What I think, think you'd go get? like, I'm going to get something like an egg sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think girls just like sweeter things. Yeah. You might have a point with that. So I think it's that. I think yeah. it's yes. Relationship with food. Like girls maybe aren't supposed to like eat a whole bunch because then that's not girly to where guys it's like promoted to like, eat a bunch of stuff <laughs> well i think you, i think you might have a point it's like if we went to a gas station like i would try to go get like a a shitty breakfast sandwich or like a shitty chicken sandwich from there to where like i feel like girls would like go get the like uh, gummy worms or you know sure it's like the small little petite thing but it's like packed with sugar yeah to where the guys are gonna get like or like a um, blueberry muffin and, yeah, yeah and that yeah. has a shit and a sugar in it yeah yeah, you might have some. So yeah. I think it's that the relationship with food. I also think it's their relationship with fitness. What has started out, guys are always into the lifting weights, doing that to where it would be not kind of normal to see you guys in like a spin class or a Zumba class. You know what? That's an interesting thing, and of course we have a topic today, and we're never going to talk about it. But I think that's a very. I think that's like a a huge point that I hadn't thought of before is it seems like for fitness and exercise, men are going towards something to achieve it and women are avoiding something. Interesting. So you already have this like positive connotation to for men to go after something to where women have this negative connotation to like, I'm avoid getting overweight. I'm avoid looking, you know, but do you think it's the same thing with guys if they're avoiding trying to look small? Or there's just more of an emphasis like get big. I think it's more that. I think that's more the focus. This is not like there's obvi- obviously it's like avoid getting small. You're getting big to avoid being small. Right. But you're still but like the trying thought, to go forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thought is I'm moving for I'm going towards that thing to where women I think just say like women, I'm trying to lose weight. Yeah. Not women, like I'm trying to get a better physique. It's like yeah, I'm trying to get rid of this thing. It does. Yeah. It doesn't seem like they're they have that mentality with it. And obviously it's generalizing, but. Yeah, it seems like it's more I'm I'm try it's I'm trying to avoid being overweight or I'm trying to avoid looking large or I'm trying to avoid looking, you know, anorexic or whatever it is. It's it's always the avoiding the thing. It's not the like Yeah. I'm going f- to like get really lean and skinny and healthy or whatever or I'm trying to put on a little bit more weight so that I don't look too skinny and too whatever. It's yeah. always like I'm avoiding this image to where guys. It's always like I'm going towards that image. I'm trying to get to be bigger and have a big chest and big arms. And I'm trying to get really strong to where women. It's like, I'm just trying to get away from looking this way. I wonder that's, I think that's so right, but I wonder where that stems from. I don't know because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make sense. Like you can, you can basically look at it in two different ways. Like as the guy, you can go, I'm looking, I'm trying to get bigger or you can look at it as I'm trying to avoid being small. So it's like, you can pick whatever mindset you Mm -hmm. want with it. And it seems like, or what I would say is the healthier thing is to look ahead, look forward, move forward. Like I'm trying to get bigger or I'm trying to, like, I want to be smaller and leaner, not mm-hmm. I'm avoiding this thing. I don't want to be this big or I don't want to be this small. And you're kind of running away from it and trying to avoid it. I think there's a maybe mm-hmm. like a 
it feels like there's a control, more of a control. I'm trying to get big. Like I'm putting the effort in. I'm in control of it. To where the I'm avoiding being big, you're kind of like, it's like it's happening to you. And you're well, trying to block it and avoid it. I wonder if it's like the same thing that you see with like behavior patterns is you're trying so hard to not be something or do something, but where's more, more of your focus going on to that thing. Yeah. yeah so yeah. if you're like, I'm going to work on, I don't know. Of course not. I can't think of literally any example, but like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get, I'm going to try to go out and get more exercise versus I'm going to tr- try to avoid sitting on the couch all day. So now you're just thinking of sitting on the couch all day. I need yes. to not do that. I need to not do that. Rather than what are you needing to do? Right. Go yeah. Have your mind go towards the thing that you're trying to do. Yeah. Not avoid the thing. Yeah. Because I think of like, oh, if I'm trying to not gain weight and I'm like stressed about that and always focusing on that. Now maybe I'm going to spiral into like, well, what puts me into that position? Eating bad food. Well, now you're just thinking about eating those bad foods all <laughs> yeah. day. So then you're like, oh, okay, well, now I'm avoiding something. So now I probably want that more. Or why am I getting overweight? It's because I don't go to the gym. It's like, okay, well, now you're thinking about all the reasons that you don't like going to the gym. Yeah. And you're going to continue to do those. Rather than going, I'm going to try, like, I'm going to try to stay lean or get lean. So now you're thinking of what are all the healthy things I should eat? What are are all the healthy behaviors I should try to do to, to get to that rather than the oh i'm gonna avoid all the like i can't eat the cookies i can't eat the chips i can't have this i can't have that and then like you said like now you're just thinking of those things all day long rather than <laughs> yeah. you could be thinking about what's gonna make me leaner uh chicken and vegetables and like fruit and all those good things now you're just thinking about those things all day yeah rather than the the bad things yeah well you're just filling your thoughts with a little bit more positive positivity than yeah. Things that you shouldn't be doing or can't have or things that you need to, like, take away from yourself. Yeah. And I think that's just generally the, I don't know, I think it's a better mindset. Like, I'm moving forward and going forward. I'm not, like, looking behind uh-huh. me trying to get away from it all the time. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. That's it. End the podcast. We'll that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It kind of ties into what we want to talk about of, like, uh, what what, you know, people on this like fitness or health journey or trying to get healthier what what people are tending to do incorrectly what they're mm-hmm. kind of doing wrong and what would be a better you know better process or better way of getting at it and doing it you know you have a lot of people that are like i'm trying to lose weight so i'm just doing cardio all the time or i'm you know trying to put on a bunch of size and now i'm doing split routines mm-hmm. and like just pounding the muscles and trying to basically get as injured as possible we were just talking about in the last episode like or one of the last episodes that like we were so lucky with how we got into fitness because of we we didn't have to avoid a lot of mistakes yeah um because we just we were able to work with people that were more experienced than us that well and they allowed us to yeah we were lucky enough for that but now because we're so ingrained in this world and hearing so many people's stories of like oh i wish i would have known this earlier like, oh, I wish I would have done this, or I wish I would have started yeah. with this. Kind of just bringing those up in this episode of like, oh, this is like a lot of people choose to do this first, or a lot of people make these mistakes. So it's kind of like things we wish we would have known, or <laughs> <laughs> like mistakes to avoid that we've kind of like culminated from talking to a bunch of people. Yeah. What do you think's the the number one, like? The, the too much cardio and under eating that's two things but, but i think those things go together i think the person that does too much cardio is also under eating <laughs> yeah I, I think, think th- they go i'm so overweight that i need to restrict so yeah. then they stop eating and then that person also sees people that are running on the trouble be super skinny yeah yeah, yeah. So, so then they, they go oh i want to be skinnier so now i need to go crazy on the cardio yeah yeah, I and it's something that makes you feel like you're working really hard. Yes, that I think they also categorize that as like, oh, I'm doing something to lose the weight. Yeah, something yeah, I think I think the the what I would put number one is cardio to lose weight is what people are doing wrong. I, I think it's just the it, it's all the things you just said. It's like it's it looks hard. 
Um, it feels hard. You sweat a lot. You sweat a lot. Like the people that are doing it generally are really skinny. Um, so like it, it would all make sense to that be mm -hmm. what it is. Um, and I think my, my opinion on it now is like, it's not the exercise that's going to make you skinny. It's the diet. It's the food. You know, you can eat, you can not exercise at all and just eat a certain way and lose weight. And I think people don't, I don't know, don't connect those things. And it's kind of that, like, the exercise is just going to help and facilitate some of that um, or expedite it, I guess you could say. But, um, yeah, the losing the losing weight, the direction that I would go is focusing more on your diet rather than the cardio or just what you're eating. It's not mm -hmm. that you have to go on a diet, but it's focusing on the food that you're eating and the intake and all that kind of stuff. And I would say it's, you know, because people tend to restrict or eat very low calorie, I think that's where the frustration can come in because they're like, I'm already eating nothing. Well, it's like, and I'm not losing weight or I'm actually gaining weight, but I'm not eating anything. That yeah. really focusing on the quality of your food and breaking down actually what you're eating. You know, it's like, I think that's where the frustration can sometimes come in from people that do know or see this pattern happen so many times but can also see from the viewpoint of that person is they're like well i'm eating a salad so that's good right but then you're dousing it in ranch oh yeah so it's like it's those little things it's like well i only ate pancakes one time this week it's like okay well you had pancakes one time this week you had a salad with a bunch of ranch on it you had dinner where you also had you know some other weird sauce on it or something like that yeah that like calorie dense and sugary sauce and, and I, ha yeah. I you know i i had everything good i had salads all day but i had juice with it like i had just yeah. like a fruit juice with it not homemade but you know like one of those basically just sugar and they don't see how all of those things the um commercial <laughs> yeah what was it fucking it was um, like gummies made out of fruit juice and it's like 7.9 percent fruit juice yeah like, so what's like the whole made out of fruit of juice and they literally put it right up there 7.9 percent hilarious um like the frustration of they don't but that's where I, I like your perspective on that of like looking at the food because that's where i think a lot of traps come in is they think that most people i shouldn't say most people i think we hear this a lot where people say i eat healthy mm -hmm. and then they break down actually what they eat and it's yeah. like there's only parts of this that are healthy or you just think because you made it at home it's healthy right that or it's like because it's organic or it says keto on it or because it yeah, has yeah. like i'm just thinking like keto on it or it's vegan or it says sugar free or whatever yep that you don't realize how all of those little things in each little meal yep. add up. Yep. Um, cause you're, it's still like you're eating something going against your goal every day. Right. And yeah, you kind of, it's almost like you, you, you don't even, it's the things that you don't maybe even think about or realize. Like you said, it's like, well, I'm you don't think they add up as much. I'm having a salad, but then yeah, yeah, you have it in this like, you know, potentially really sugary, dressing yeah. or just like really calorie dense dressing and yeah then you like you said now you're having like oh i had this little sweet treat only once this week but then i had you know the salad with the really calorie dense dressing yeah. every day and then i had the the chicken that was breaded and that's what i love you know. breaking down for people is like they think oh well i like say take the pancakes example it's like well i only have pancakes like once a week it's like, okay, now you have that one thing. I only put creamer or sweet creamer in my coffee twice a week. It's like now you, when you break it all down, you've had something bad every day. It's just, yeah. it's tricks your mind because it's something different. So you see like, oh, I only have syrup once a week. That's not crazy. And then it's just the, yeah. It's like we well, have a bunch had, of things once a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. once a day or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think, would that be like your second thing that you think people are, I don't know, just kind of doing wrong or just missing on the on the health journey i guess i you could think say. it's you think that's the number two i think cardio is a big one but yeah i think it's food and lying to yourself about the food. maybe not lying to yourself I think but like unawareness yeah you're, you're unaware and saying you eat healthy but you're not really dialing in on what 
that maybe means or like and, and I take that to myself too like I was under eating a whole bunch and I didn't really even realize it's like until I started tracking it I was like oh I'm like not eating that much yeah like well, it's, it's actually very easy to s- skip like skip meals or you know you're just like grazing all day like one day when I was working I was just like grazing all day it's like I ate all day but it's like if you accumulated that to a meal it's like it wasn't really that much it just you yeah. ate all you ate a bunch of little things <laughs> yeah but it's like oh I only had like a handful of almonds yeah and then a piece of bread and then an egg here and there <laughs> I think I think my my second thing like second on that list would be the um I don't I guess I don't know how to put it but like if you're trying to basically if you're trying to gain weight or lose weight um the the eating is off the diet is off Mm -hmm. um i think generally people that are trying to gain weight don't realize how much protein and how much food they need to eat um quality of food too i would say because i think people that think oh i need to eat a bunch to put on weight it's like the dirty bulk method yeah yeah yeah. which you know that way you're at least going to hit you're probably going to hit the protein levels but at the same time like you're okay, gonna well because most people that do the dirty bulk thing they, they go to weight gainer shakes or they you know they just they're eating so much food that and it's they have the excuse for the junk the their carbohydrate and fat levels are going to be through the <laughs> roof yeah but the protein is going to squeak up there that's like you're maybe having enough protein like right sure. right at what you need but now your carbohydrates and fats are like skyrocketed yeah. through um but i don't think people realize how much protein they need to have and what that even looks like like how much protein gets you to your goal type it's of thing it's so it's much. so much but then we're I tracking think, our protein right now oh my gosh yeah it's I was difficult <laughs> like when you actually try to hit your targets like there was one day last week where I actually hit it and it was like I had two scoops of protein I had like a dense amount of meat in every meal and I like it's it's and the goal I get to, it it's hard the goal would be to not have the protein the protein shakes, shakes yeah. and the you know yeah that's supposed to be just like to top it off when you don't hit your mark yeah. like I don't know how it hit my mark yeah and that's that kind of shows you how much like worthless shit we're eating of like that's not yes. hitting the protein level, and, and that's you know? where I that's where I go to the like the dirty bulk. Why I just have a bad taste in my mouth of that is it's like you're not prioritizing maybe the biggest bang for your buck foods that now when you're like, well, why did I put on this weight? It's like because you you filled up. You like we're trying to eat so much, but you're like filling it with stuff that you're just getting full on, and now you're not getting the protein, and you're maybe not feeling your body with the like you have so many car you have so much carbs and now your body's inflamed and it's not working as good or yeah whatever that it's like oh, i wish it would be pushed like eat a lot of calories but don't just like eat whatever well and that's what it's, I think like, it's like it's just wasting people's time because what generally happens is you you do put on weight and you do get a little bit stronger because you put on more weight but then once you stop the bulking and you go back to your you know regular regular eating habits i guess you could say um you maybe just put on a lot of body fat more body fat than muscle even and now you're going back down to your regular eating habits and now it's just like you're maybe more fatty than you were before or you just like you go back to where you started like Mm -hmm. there's really no gain that happened yeah you had you had you know gains for a, a month or two or three and now they're just all back to the same place you were before right and it's just because like you just put on a little bit more weight and probably an even balance between muscle and fat. Um, and most of the time, probably more fat because of that's easier to put on. It's easier to put on and, and water weight really too, that now when you go back to regular, you don't really feel like anything had happened because you just like, yeah, you just go back to where you were before. The thing that I would pair with that is basically the reverse of that of, um, people trying to lose weight that just like cut calories immediately that's like uh, so many people don't realize how little food they're already eating Mm -hmm. that now you cut calories and now you're just like starving yourself and (coughs) exhausting yourself 
that's like your metabolism is already so slow <clears throat> so slow and like is not you're not helping yourself with it that the the part of that that i think people are doing wrong is like you need to track to know what you're eating because most people probably aren't overeating that much and should cut you know it's like the person that should cut could cut immediately is the person already eating you know 25 to 3000 calories well let's not make it so like okay do you think that's true across the board are of people are under eating or they're just under eating on certain things and overeating on others because well i think i think generally people are still under eating they still could be not eating the things that they should be eating but i think i think generally people that have weight problems are very self-conscious about what they're eating and how much they're eating hmm. that they end up just not eating that much and then they're like i'm trying to cut and they sure. like that's that's what's the the part that I think people are doing wrong is like they'll look up wh how to lose weight or what should I do to lose weight and then somebody's sitting there going like oh just make sure you're eating 1500 calories and do this much exercise and you'll be good. Yeah. It's like well you don't even know where they started at. Maybe they're starting at 1500 calories. And, and they're not cutting anything. Yeah, and that's still where I go well I totally agree with that with like the tracking. Either way, whether you're going to try to bulk or cut. You got you got to know where your maintenance is at before you can move in either direction. Right. But that's where I go back to the quality of the food because you could feel like you're eating a whole bunch all day, but what you're eating is kind of empty. Like you're not getting a lot of nutrient nutrients in it. You're not getting cal. It's like you eat the salad. It's like there's not you're not getting much from lettuce. So like you see, like I'm eating salads all day. Like I'm eating a bunch or whatever, but it's what you're getting in that food isn't that's where i could see like the under eating is like what you're eating isn't really providing a whole bunch of density but then i could also see on the other spectrum of you're just eating a bunch of junk yeah yeah i don't know i think i think the answer to it all is like you have to know where you're starting at first and because the reason i think is like i'm thinking of people that like don't know how to portion control it's like they might be still eating too much, but if you take the same amount of what they're eating but just change it for healthy foods, they could be fine. It's just they're overeating on shit. Well, but it all depends on what their calorie what their calorie intake is. And and, and the macros too. It's like at, at either way, you're you you're gonna have to start by tracking and seeing where you're at. No matter what. It's like, I, it doesn't matter if you think you're doing this or think you're doing that. Like, we're all so wrong when it comes to that. Sure. That you have to, you have to track to know. So it's like, you think you're overeating and then that person tracks and realizes they're only eating 1200 calories a day. It's like, well, but I'm full all the time. It's like, sure. yeah, but it, you're only eating 1200 calories. And then that's not safe or not going to be effective to cut from there, to try to cut calories from there. But then the person that, you know, maybe isn't full or doesn't doesn't eat think 3, they eat a lot. 3000 calories a day but it's fast food. Yeah, and they're hitting 3000 calories a day. It's like, okay, now now we can kind of cut from there, but like you're saying the first step might be we got to change what you're eating first. Right. The calorie amount might be fine, but it's what you're filling those calorie numbers or like yeah. the budget with. I think people just they go they go to cut calories right away when trying to lose weight and it's it's more complex than just cutting calories because one, how do you even know you're cutting? You don't know what you eat right. regularly anyways. And then also having to understand like 1500 calories is not a lot. And yeah. And for you to cut, like for us to lose weight and for you to cut, like you're going to have to go down to, if you're at 15, you're going to have to go to like 13 or 1200 calories. And that would be kind of the safer route to go. And even then, like you're going to, your metabolism is going to slow down and shut down to where now we can't even lose any weight. Yeah. It's like you want this slow, gradual weight cutting. You're going to have to up those calories and get to a maintenance to where you're not you're not putting on any weight by eating more calories and your metabolism is speeding up and you're burning more. And then we can start cutting you. So I think people just immediately go to the cut. I'm just going to cut calories and then I'm going to lose weight and then I'm going to go exercise a bunch. And it's like 
you just went from no exercise and barely any food to now less food and a shit ton of exercise. Oh, your your metabolism and your whole system just going to go, nope. Like, I need to I'm sa- keeping everything in because I don't know when I'm going to get any more. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to save. I got to save myself yeah. because that's, you're putting yourself in dangerous territory to where it's like, yeah, the, the body's just going to go, I'm not, we're done. I'm not yeah. doing this. So that would be my number two thing of like, basically, you got to track and know where you're at first and then have a plan of like, okay, I eat 2,500 calories and I want to put on size. I need to eat 27, 2,800 calories and make sure it's more protein and, and then same in reverse. Like I eat, you know, 1,500 calories and I want to lose weight. It's like, well, I got to get that number up to make this safe Mm -hmm. and find a new maintenance and eat that and then cut a little bit Mm -hmm. because it's like, you can't cut down to 1,200 calories and then that be your lifestyle. (laughs) It's like, your body's just not gonna like you. It's gonna yeah. it's gonna do a lot of damage to yourself, and it's, it's just not gonna be good for you. Yeah, that's why I do a, I pair that with the cardio thing. Is that is the definitely the quickest way to lose weight, but it's also the most temporary. Yeah. That I, again, I go back to like the what's worth your time. Yeah. And I think we just go like, I hate how I look or how I am right now. I need to fix it right now. Yeah. That I think just reminding yourself like this was a slow burn to get here. You probably didn't yeah. just like put on 60 pounds. Right. It's like, I don't know a scenario where that would happen to anybody. You don't wake anybody. up one day and it was there. No. It's like, okay, the call is like getting pregnant. But even that, it's like we're probably putting on too much weight. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's just like, look at the Biggest Loser show. You know, how, how much of like what came, what came out after that show, you know, it's like all these people, you put lo- it right back on all these people lost all this weight crazy and fast and whatever. And all that happens is six months to a year later, 90% of them have all that weight back. on. Yep. It's like, that just shows you the lack of effectiveness that like running your body into the ground to lose weight. It doesn't, it doesn't, that's not the way to do it. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. Yeah. It's like, it just, it doesn't. And I think the two things that correlate with that is you're creating a bad relationship, not only with working out. <laughs> yeah. Because now you're like, oh, well, this doesn't work. Yeah. I have to go through hell every time I want to lose weight or like work out. Yeah. But you're also maybe a bad relationship with yourself with that of like, I have to push myself into the ground in order to get anything from it. And I would also say if you're someone that thinks you're overweight and you're losing weight, And now you're going to go run. It's like your body is not set up for that. Like you're putting so much, like you're probably not someone that like knows how to do that very efficiently and effectively. And even if you do, like you have a lot of weight being pressed onto like maybe bad movement patterns, (laughs) bad joints. And like you're probably so deconditioned and now you're going to go run. Like I just think that's maybe you're setting yourself up for some weird injuries. Well, we see that at the gym too. You know, you see all the people that are putting on massive amounts of weight on the bench press or squat rack or whatever, bicep curl, whatever. And it's like, if you're going to do that and then have bad form with it too, like you're just, you're putting yourself in a position to get injured. Yeah. That's just, it's just what it is. And then that's not the most effective way to do it. I think that's, that's probably the number three thing for me is just the, um, people doing too much too fast. You know, it's like they want to put on a lot of weight. They want to put on muscle, put on weight, or they want to lose weight. It's the same thing of like just way too much. They think they need to do seven days of running or they need to do seven days of weight training. And that's just not what the research shows. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to do that, but people want results fast. Like to your point before, they want the results as fast as possible. Um, but it's just not, it's the longevity in that it's it's just not going to work you know it's again like the dirty bulk thing i think people they they almost break it up into like i'm going to dirty bulk for this month and pack on as much weight as i can and they know that there's an end date in sight so they just go hardcore for that month and then at the end of the month now they just let everything fall apart now it's like now my diet can fall apart now my exercising can fall apart because you just went so hard in that short amount of time you're 
you're basically already giving yourself an out by going, okay, at the end of this month, like my dirty bulk or my bulking is going to be done and I can just like, I'll be where I want then. It's like, yeah. and then you just, you stop, you stop your, your bulk. And then all of a sudden, like you're not eating the way you used to and your diet's getting weird. You're not going and exercising as much as you used to. So now you just start to go back and that's yes. like, now you're back to where you began a month ago. Yeah. And that's, and maybe this is a rude thing to say, but to me, if you're still someone that's like seeing it as like, I'm dirty bulking, you should not be bulking. (laughs) Like you just don't know enough information yet because to me, it's like, if you think dirty bulking is the way to go, like you're missing a lot of tools in your tool belt or you're going to go about it in maybe a funky way that I think that also the people that get frustrated with the dirty bulk, it's because you're not bulking with intention like you're not tracking before you don't know what is more you don't understand what certain foods do and why and you're probably not matching your workout programming with like you're putting so much on the eating and eating bad food because maybe it's just like your way of getting to eat bad food (laughs) yeah um but it's like your intensity of your workouts or your your uh the mathematics of your programming is probably not changing or maybe matching that. Yeah. That. Um, well, I think it's like, it's the shotgun approach to just make sure you gain weight. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to eat whatever I can see in sight to gain weight. And it's like, well, if that's your only goal, <laughs> I guess, yes, but it's not going to be the most effective or efficient way to like keep that weight on and have it be right. good weight, like being more muscle than it is fat and, making sure your metabolism is still working properly and oh yeah it's like you eat all this crap clogging up and now your gut's like nah yeah and now you're not absorbing any not anything but like you're not absorbing a good chunk of your food yeah so now it's like well that kind of just goes to waste right and you're yeah. just <laughs> yeah you're like oh i shit six times a day now it's like yeah because yeah. your body's not taking it's rejecting in any this. of the nutrients yeah yeah so i think I, I think you have a good point of just like I don't know. To me, I like I like how you're saying it of like, is it worth your time? Like the dirty bulk thing. It's just I did that when I was younger and it just it's not it's not worth the time. It's like you just just eat those things on your own thing every once in a while just because you like them. But to like program it for health and to like get a fitness goal or aesthetic goal. Yeah, it's kind of a weird like it's excuse like to this is a. I don't know, like if, if you're if you're that into fitness where you want to like get bigger and like have a goal like that do uh, do a little bit extra research for yourself so that you actually get what you want well right because you could you could actually do something that is more it's efficient and then you hold on to that muscle yeah and if that is actually your goal if you just want to eat that food okay just eat that but yeah if you're wanting to like get bigger and stay bigger and have that muscle and keep that muscle it's like there's a much more efficient way to yeah. do it than just like i'm gonna shotgun approach and just try to like i'm gonna it's like sure it's the surefire way to gain weight but it's like all the other shit comes with it too yeah the fat comes with it the maybe joint aches and pains like inflammation the gut inflammation, health issues gut health no energy like just bowling ball feeling like and just like you think great. of what foods are in a dirty ball it's hard like it's it's foods that come with a lot of other trash it's like yeah it's the the weird oils and the yeah. weird t- kinds of protein or different dairy like it's, it's hard of- to get those you're gonna have that with those foods that's just like a part of it. that's also why they're good <laughs> yeah yeah and that's why i'm like it's just it's just the shotgun approach and it, to me it's really hard to get high levels of protein with that kind of food yeah see i disagree with that you think so like think of like yeah. going to culver's you're gonna get more carbs than you would protein yeah but that's the thing is like you're just consuming everything so you're gonna reach up to the protein because like you're gonna go mm. eat cheeseburgers and you know like sure. milkshakes and all that bullshit that like it still has protein in it but like you said you're also getting all of the other bullshit with it got it it is i my experience of it it is easier to get the protein because you're just you're eating so much more and you're also eating stuff that is 
sparking you to eat a little bit more too all the processed yeah, food that's good yeah you you get used to it and then you want to eat more and you want to eat more yeah like that, i want culver's right now yeah so bad <laughs> yeah that you just i don't know you you're gonna hit you're probably gonna hit the protein levels but you're also gonna double and triple your carbohydrate and fat levels and now it's yeah. like what are we even doing i remember one time when i was working out with you it was in high school and you're like i just want to go at culver's and it was like that was when i was like I was still eating bad just because, like, I was just didn't have the education. <laughs> That's just, like, what I always ate growing up. And I was like, how do you, like, what? And he's like, yeah, I'm dirty bulking. It's like, I'm going to, I get, like, this, this, and this. I'm like, what? How do you eat that much? And I'm like, no. He's like, okay, well, what if we go to Duncan? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was just like, it was, like, wrapping my head around, like, how do you look it, like that and eat that? It's a common sense thing. Like, it's like, this doesn't, this isn't common sense. There's no, no way like this is healthy. And no. I think like to your point of just being like almost like tricking yourself into like this is healthy and what I should do to get right. to gain weight. Like, well, I'm putting on muscle and I'm just doing it in this mm. version. It's like now <laughs> you're just finding a weird roundabout way to eat shitty. Well, because I remember like, like I, you're like, I'm so excited to dirty bulk. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, no shit, because you're buying Culver's every day. Yeah. Like, I'd love to even eat Culver's every day, too. Maybe I was, but. Like yeah, I I'm not you're like, like oh you're this is Culver's. good for like, me. I'm gonna go have Taco Bell. Yeah, so much more. <laughs> I'm gonna go have two tacos from Taco Bell. So much healthier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't a, know. I just think like I think of your body as the vessel or a car. It's like you're not gonna put shit fuel in it, or if you do, like understand what it is. But yeah. if you want your body to, it was that one quote. Not a quote. It was one of the scenes from that one movie that we watched where it was like this bodyguard and he was like, he's a Ferrari. You don't give him because he's like trying to give him like shit wine or something. Mm. And he's like, he's a he's that. like, he's a Ferrari. You get him the good stuff. If you want him to be a Ferrari, you got to fuel him with like it was wine. But like he's like, he doesn't ha put any shit in his body. You will not give him any shit. If you want him to run that way, you keep giving him like top quality everything. Yeah. What was like, that movie? Feed the Ferrari. Um. It was some Liam Neeson movie. Oh, really? Yeah. What recent one we would have watched? I don't know. It's all like the same kind of movies. <laughs> some Liam Neeson movie. Name it, any of them. It's the, that one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I see it as that. It's like you want put, like but gaining muscle and looking that or not even looking that way, but like being able to get anywhere above maintenance, like regular health is an extra thing is like a you're trying to go a little above and beyond that now you're going to try to get something a little bit more advanced with fueling it with less quality things. Right. right it's like, right. don't expect your car to run for years and years and years when you don't change the oil, when you put shit oil in it, when you always pick like the cheapest parts to adjust everything with like, and now you're trying to you're like fixing everything with duct tape <laughs> and now you're, you're entering it into races. And right. You're, you're trying to compete with, with other things and like, and then like, yeah. why is it not working? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like set your system up to be able to build yeah. into what you want that if you just want the food, just have the food. But I yeah, I think that with that one, it, it's just it's a little bit of a common sense thing. You know, with the, it's just like, do you really think this is healthy for you? Right. It's like, right. Do you really think this is healthy for right. you? It's like, no, it's not. It's just a funky way to and eat like shit and <laughs> be able to be like yeah i'm dirty bulking and i'm that that means that it's okay it's yeah like well no it's like which i think if you have tracked and you know like okay this is my maintenance and this is what i want to try to push through to for a if you are doing a bulk i think maybe my suggestion to kind of live in both of those worlds if you want that is because i get it, it's like you're pushing calories and sometimes that's actually very hard to do is I would try to hit your targets first. <laughs> like, make sure you're hitting your protein targets with just, like, meats and nuts and seeds and whatever else. Then if at the end of your, you know, hitting your mark, you're still like, I could fit more in. That's when you go to the cheeseburger. Oh, sure. It's like, if yeah. you still want to eat more, okay, that's when you go for that. But still get yeah. it with quality stuff first. Then top it off. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this, like, I don't know. That's where I almost put like the bad food category or the things you shouldn't eat or drink. I, I just put it in such a different, it's in its own, it's in its own pot. It's just like, fun. 
to uh, yeah to me it's like to to even program with <laughs> that in mind utilize it? is yeah. like you're you're <laughs> already like kind of not doing this it's like that stuff is just in its own thing and it happens every once in a while and it, right. it just comes like whatever your healthy relationship with that is like building that and creating that that just stays in its own little world if we're trying to be healthy and put on muscle or we're trying to lose weight like we don't take this pot and incorporate when we can eat the bad foods into this you know it's like sunday i go off the rails or like sure. you scheduling it in it's like I don't know. To me, it's that you're not playing the like 90% rule. It's like 90% of the food or thing that I consume is, is good and it's good for me. And I know that 10% happens every once in a while, happens randomly. Um, and just letting it be that and be its own fun thing. Well, okay. So maybe that's where I go back to like the, the rules that were not the rules, but like things that we notice. like say if we're on three, uh, understand yourself of what level you are in fitness like, I really don't think people should be incorporating a cut or a bulk or some sort of, like, fitness aesthetic, like, insane goal until you know that you have solidified, like, that is your baseline so consistently. Yeah. Because that is still a, like, um, extra thing. Like, if you're going to bulk... You got to be all in. There's no, I'm going to yeah. eat, you know, eat crazy or I'm going to miss a workout or I'm going to go like you are fully consumed into that thing. Same thing with a cut. Like you're tracking your everything all day, every workout, every meal, you know, what's coming in, you know, what's what you're you know utilizing to go out. There's no like, oh, well, I've been doing good. I'm going to have something. I'm going to have chocolate. It's like, no, you're in your cut. You're either in this mm -hmm. or you're out. That, like you said before, there's this like, oh, I'm going to do it while I'm in the thing. And then I'm going to like fall off the rails. Yeah. To where if you're someone that's consistent enough with this, with the, all of this, that won't happen because it's such a regular part of your life. Yeah. That it's just like, oh, because like, like we do certain programs that we're like, oh, we're like really into this right now. Like this is going to be the program for the next nine weeks or whatever yeah. but we're not going to go we just got to push through these nine weeks and then we can fall off for a week yeah yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. it's still like we're gonna still go to the gym afterwards and we're still gonna like go into another program or whatever that if you're not at that level i wouldn't suggest doing something that you know you can't be all in on and then continue it after yeah i think it's like if you can't work out consistently and eat healthily without goals Yes, you're not you're not in a position to like cut and bulk and do all these like aesthetic adventures and stuff like right. You need to be able to just like I consistently exercise and I consistently eat healthy and I don't have a single path or direction I want to go. Like I'm just simply doing it for health. Mm -hmm. That is like the baseline. And it's like you need to get to there before you start doing these other things. Yeah. It's like you don't do start doing algebra before you learn how to add and subtract. Right. It's like you got to learn how to add, a, add and subtract and then you can start moving up and doing these other things and manipulating like manipulating carbs and fats and protein and like exercise and calories and all this kind of shit. It's like you don't even know how to go to the gym once or twice a week. Right. It's like, why are we doing all this advanced shit? It's like you got to get to that point. Yeah. Where I'm just doing this for health and I have no goal in mind besides get my ass to the gym and eat good food. It's like you have to start there and make sure you can do that. And that's your baseline. And do that for a hot second. <laughs> yeah. Do that for a cold second. Fucking yeah. long as shit second. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Because all that stuff is just like extra, extra fun stuff. And it's almost like that's to, that's to keep things a little bit more fun as you do this for years and years and the rest of your life. Yeah. That just like mix it up every once in a while. But yeah like i would say that's another that's a that's a thing that people get wrong is like they get almost like too serious when they don't have the behavior and skills to be like do they they do the advanced stuff before they have the, the skills and then and the you're not doing to, the advanced stuff appropriately right or you're not staying consistent with it yeah you know yeah. that it's like you even take that like take a bulk or a cut 
are you able to like track every day and track your like that's hard enough in itself to where it's like there's you can't do a bulk and some days like i'm gonna really go for it today and eat as much as i possibly can yeah but then like oh the next day i'm kind of sick of it and you don't and you fall off or like i i'm busy today i'm not going to go to the gym it's like you can't allow that when you're doing these things otherwise it won't work and how many people how many people track and then start cutting not even realizing that 1500 calories is way too little to be eating yes and then to cut and if you were in a position to cut, you would know this information. <laughs> yeah, right. That's like, like you're you're not there yet. Yeah, and that's okay. No, you have so many other things to get to first. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Like that. That is not the baseline of health. That's the extra stuff. Right, right. Yeah, and I think people just attribute health so much to their image first before sure. the behavior. It's like health is not how you look. Like I think at this point we all know that like all of the all of the the stuff about, you know, skinny models and all of that like oh they're actually not that healthy. It's like you're right. They're not. <laughs> yeah. So you know that health is not based on image. It's based on the your behaviors. And I would so say if that's get healthy <laughs> first based off of your behaviors. And I think that's where both of those things can kind of work together is if you the healthy people, when you see them out and about, they do tend to look good. It's like you notice that they. Or you don't notice them at all. Well, <laughs> okay. I don't know if you want to switch it. The shades are creating the lines on your face. Oh, yeah. Um, but like if you just pr if you just start focusing on doing things for the, the love of the game. <laughs> Yeah. But just like the creating the function, like you will start to get the things that you're maybe searching for, like just through doing it. It's like yeah. you might start to lose a little weight. You might start to look a little tighter and feel better and you start to be able to move around more. But yeah. those things will naturally happen. Uh, yeah. It's like when you go for these, that's what's trying to get you in the door. Like you've never worked out before and you're going for a cut or a bulk. Like it's not where you start. You're setting yourself up for a lot of disappointment simply just because you're not going to know the information yet. Well, and I think just look at what those things naturally are is it's a time limit thing Yes. to where you're already giving yourself an out when this is done. Fitness is forever. Yeah. To where it's like the where where you start is like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And that's where I'm going to that's where I'm starting is getting used to that that idea and that, you know, amount of exercise and eating healthy and that sort of thing. And that's why we always recommend like start really slow like go to the gym once a week or even like start with walking mm -hmm. and that's where you start because you want to build up to you want to have your thought process be what can i start doing that i'm going to do for the rest of my life not this cut thing where it's like well i can give a i can give a good month and a hardcore month it's like yeah you're you're going 100 miles an hour right away to just then fall apart once it's over with it's like you need to start start very small and build up to it and then once you get to a point where okay i'm doing everything good and consistent and i have the behaviors now i can try this cut thing that i can go a little bit extra for a month and then i'm done okay so that's my fourth thing where i feel like people start off on the wrong foot is if you say like choose a program or choose something to follow people tend to because they're really amped to do it they start with the programs that are very short and very intense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you start with the, like the 30 day programs. Yep. Something that's like, it's only going to take you 30 days. It probably has a shit ton of intensity in it and you're going way too much. Yep. So if that, if any of the programs that you look at, like have all of those <laughs> alarms on them, red flags, chill. Like yeah. if it looks too intense, it probably is. If yep. it looks like you're going way too much, you probably are. If it's only 30 days, not enough time. Yeah. Well, I think you, I, I was going to say, I think people generally go, oh, this is going to kick me into gear. It won't. <laughs> no. Nothing's going to kick you into gear. No. If you're not there, you're not going to be there. There is no gear and there is no kick. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a slow churn. Yeah. That for me personally, what I would suggest is find something like if you if you're wanting to say like follow something and you're not just wanting to like go off of your own 
whatever. Yeah. Um, do something that's very long lasting. Yeah. Even if it's a, even if like, say it's a, like our programs are all around like nine to 12 weeks and some of them, they might be way, way too much intensity for you. And even if you chose one day a week, I would choose something that is full body and something that is long lasting so that you can practice it for that amount of time. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the, like, that would be, if it's somebody starting out, it's, it is, it's what can you do for basically forever? And it, it's mm-hmm. like, it's okay to not be doing the right things right away. Yeah. It, because you're still building behavior. Like it, it's start with one full body routine. And even if you don't know if those exercises are the best exercises to do, it's like, that's not the point right now. The point is just to get you to show up and do the thing. So yeah, it's just, and that's where I would say resistance training is a good bet. Yeah. And something that you can follow for a long time. And even if it's like, you know, like, like I said, like all of our programs that we have are nine to 12 weeks. Even if you run that back to back, if you're like eh, after that nine, what after the nine week mark, you're still like, it's really hard to come. It's like, okay, just run it again. That's okay. Like, but you don't really need to start adding in goals. Like we said, until that is so solid, you don't have to even question it. Right. And that's, I think that's the, the nice thing about, you know, even starting slow and beginning is like things will happen. You yeah. Know, whether you're losing weight or getting stronger or whatever, you're just going to notice mood, energy levels, maybe your relationship with exercise and eating healthy. Like you're going to notice different things that I think are more valuable than just like cutting a bunch of weight right away right. because it's all the things that are going to help you continue doing this for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else, um, like what's another thing that people tend to do that isn't, is not maybe the best approach right away? I think you, you hit, you hit the other one on the head that I was thinking of is just like too much intensity too like too soon. And maybe, maybe even like to put in there a little bit of like the soreness thing. Like I need to get sore in order for anything to be working. It's like, no, you don't need to be sore. It's not about being sore. You're getting something out of just going for a 10 minute walk that you aren't used to doing. And then do like a 20 minute walk. Like you don't need to get sore for things to be going in a positive direction. Oh yeah. Oh, well, okay. So like going off of those, like, um, yeah, getting sore, like getting way too sore, needing to sweat. Yeah. You don't need to sweat. Needing to sweat. Um, the, f- like feeling like you need to leave feeling worn out. Yeah. It's like, I think you should leave kind of feeling more just like even keel. All exercise is beneficial. Mm-hmm. Like walking is beneficial and you know, biking is like, don't, don't let people tell you, you know, oh, you have to lift weights in order to be healthy or whatever. It's like, no, any sort of activity, playing outside with your kids, going for a bike ride, walking, you know, it's like any sort of activity is good. Oh, and I think alongside that, like consistency is better than going back to like the, the intensity of the bursts. Like it's better for you to go once a week, once a month than three times. It's like, it's like, Oh, my schedule is a little bit clearer now. Like I'm going to go three times this week. And then you don't go for a month. Mm -hmm. The once a week or once a month is still going to be way better than you like crash course it and then fall off and crash course it and fall off. Because I think what people don't like, you can't just like add up points. (laughs) Right. Well, and it's like, I think people go, well, the three times a week is more than once a month. Like, why would I go once a month? That's so silly and stupid. It's like, yeah, but you going once a month and then actually doing that is creating a good relationship and creating trust in yourself to where you go three times in a week and then the next week you fall off and can't do it. Mm -hmm. You're now, you're now teaching yourself that you can't trust yourself. Right. So it's not so much about like, well, if I did that and I did that a couple times a week, a year like I would I would end up hitting more workouts in the year than I would just going once a month once a month I only do 12 workouts a year so it's like if I did the falling off I could hit 20 it's like yeah but it's not about the amount 
It's that you have a horrible relationship with exercise and you're never going to get to a point where you can go consistently and keep that going for once a month. You're creating the trust in yourself that maybe after a year, now you can go twice a month. Yeah. And then you can go three times a month and you keep building that up. But that is, well, and the that's kind of hard to hear because people are not going <laughs> to, no. they're not going to go like, they're going to go once a month. And then I go to two times a month. Like, this is going to take me 40 years to get to where I want to go. It's like, yeah, but that is better that you get to that point than this crap you're doing of three times and then you fall off and now you have a shitty relationship with it. And because when you fall off, it's not like you fall back and go back to zero. You fall back and then you go to negative 10. Right. And then you have to somehow build yourself back up to zero so that you can go try three times again and then fall back to 10. Yeah. And even if you like don't care about the behavior part, which that's also your first step. <laughs> Stop about, listening to our podcast. Care, <laughs> care about the behavior because you're not going to get anywhere otherwise. But if you see it even as like a physical thing, it, this might sound dramatic, but it's like if you go three times, you're, like you're doing the crash course thing. Like you're going three workouts and then you stop for two weeks. See it as like money. That would be like, I'm going to save up 10 grand this month, but then at I'm going to in that first week, but then by the end of the month, you go back to a dollar. It's like you got a little bit, but like you're losing a lot of it because your body's not going to hold on to that no. versus the once a month. That's like every every once a month, a thousand dollars goes into your bank account, a thousand dollars within your bank account, a thousand dollars within your bank account. That's still going to add up quicker than the a hundred bucks, the hundred bucks every month because you crash course it to get that 10 grand. It's yeah. like it, you're going to just keep going back to zero or like you said, nothing like your body doesn't remember. Like your body doesn't hold on. It doesn't build that quickly in those three workouts. Yeah. That yeah. it's not like, oh, I, st- I I did a whole bunch of work in those three days. And then it'll remember and hold on to all that for the next month. It's like yeah, you go yeah. back to nothing. Yeah. So it's it kind of like you didn't really do much. And there's just no, there's no good relationship being built. And I think that's what like, if you want to consistently be healthy and like, and just have it be a part of your life and it's just that's you're not going to get there by doing no the, the crash course like you're saying it's just not gonna it doesn't work for your behavior and it doesn't work for your body like your body doesn't work like that <laughs> yeah your body's just gonna go what the fuck <laughs> yeah it's like you're probably and gonna you have to recover more from it and you're putting your body in damage to just recover like you almost like you just injured yourself and then healed yourself that's what i was this just gonna say there's way more risk for injury doing that and that's the same with like 30 day challenge type of things. It's like, there's just so much risk for injury within that. That's going to put you back even further mm-hmm. that it, again, I think you have the perfect phrase for it. It's just like, that's just not worth your time. Why waste your time like that? Right. Right. Cause you're, you're really not going to get anywhere. It's going to do more damage than good. And again, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Cause even it's that, so much harder to do those things too. Like they make it so intense. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're just struggling to get zero return. Yeah. I'd rather have the person work out once a month for 12 months than the person do the 30 day challenge and work out 30 days. Yeah. And it's that like, well, I worked out 30 days and that's more than 12. It's like, it's not a, it's not about that. It's about the behavior that you're creating mm-hmm. and the trust that you're building within yourself to continue this mm-hmm. to work. You do that 30 day challenge, you're 95% chance that you're going to fall off at the end of it and not come back and not do any exercise. And, and you're probably going to go even further back than you, when you started. Now you have a horrible relationship, no mm-hmm. trust, and it's going to take you another 11 months. That's why this happens all the time. It's like that you have the new year's resolution people that start, they do that, they fall off and it takes them 11 months to build the trust in themselves again. And the belief in themselves again to go do it again. Mm-hmm. And it's the same freaking cycle over and over mm-hmm. again. It's like, don't waste your time. Don't, 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 don't waste your time. Yeah. It's like, it's silly. Yeah. Um, another thing that I think people do or that we've heard a lot of people do is um, y- like feeling like you need to, and we kind of fall into this trap sometimes or like earlier working with people is feeling like we need to make it fun. Or yeah. need to like mix it up or like two workouts can't look the same. Yep. Um, well, I think people like genuine, genuinely believe like if I do the same stuff too much, like I'm not getting as much benefit right. as I should or right. as I could if I mixed it up every single time. 
it to me the exercise like say it's a a book of all the exercises that you can do it's like ingredients of like sweets yeah it's like flour these basic ingredients can make cookies and cakes and you know muffins yeah but you just need those few ingredients yeah it's like but look at all the things that it makes it's just how you utilize them what ratios that you use exactly. that is the same thing for these <laughs> these lifts it's yeah. like you have that's what i would start with it's just like the basic five yeah. like squats chest press shoulder press um rows what am i missing i don't know i'd probably say deadlifts deadlifts yeah something like that something to hit like each major body group like I w- yeah front yeah. back or like yeah chest back, back shoulders, shoulders legs, legs or missing something though, huh? I, that's what I would I would say deadlifts. I would say your your like you said your squats, your barbell row, chest your chest press. press, your shoulder press, and then deadlifts. Yeah, because deadlifts is gonna work a ton of the core and just like your whole your whole system in unison. That those are like that's your sugar, your flour, <laughs> yeah, your, your eggs, eggs, your like butter. That yeah. is your basic ingredients that can do so much for you, and it's yeah. the biggest bang for your buck you can get really good at those you can manipulate them in so many ways but it's still that thing like you can add weight you can add tempo changes you can add pauses into it you can change Change your your, repetitions yes that even how you program it within each other yeah that makes such a difference first what goes last that if you just like start and get really good at those that's like when we went to the last episode like that's why i think i have a good base with fitness is that's all I started with. Yeah. Is like, just I just the, practiced the shit out of those and saw yeah. them as like, kind of how I connected it with dance was like, these are movements to perfect or to get good at and to practice yeah. it. That's like the better that you can be at these movements, the more that you can manipulate them, but you have to get the baseline first. But the more that you can manipulate them, the more you can mix them up and change them and yeah. make them work for you. But I think people you could do those every single workout and that's what you do. Yeah. And you I think do that uh, for years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people underestimate that too. It's like yeah. You, you don't need to get all fancy with it. No. And I think honestly, the more fancy you get, the probably farther away from what you're trying to accomplish. You're going to get, Yeah, you know, it's like if you have a program of just a bunch of bicep curls and tricep extensions and whatever, it's like it, it, in, in leg curls, leg extension, calf raises. It's like you're just, avoiding the hard stuff Mm -hmm. and you're not going to get what you want out of it yeah where it's like the the best program you could ever start somebody off on is one day a week doing those five things yep like and just pick like three sets of ten yeah and do that for six months like that is probably the best starter program anybody could ever have and it's like there you just got it for free go do it like there's nothing better there's nothing that's going to give you more more benefit besides doing that same exact thing two times a week. <laughs> it's like, right. but you're probably not ready for that. So just do one. Right. Like, and people, start with whatever one you like the best or whatever yeah. one you think you struggle with. So you want to practice it or whatever. Like there's just so, rotate them. Yeah. Like put them in order and one week do that and then just move the top one to the bottom yeah. and then just go <laughs> move the top one to the bottom. Yeah. Like people want to get so fancy and crazy and extremely intense and whatever it's like just do those five and do it once a week and do that for six months do it for a year Mm -hmm. like you're gonna be way in way better of a position six months from when you started than like you trying to do a 30-day challenge right it's like right you're gonna be yeah yeah just yeah that's the truth yeah so don't get fancy with it you don't need to mix it up you don't need to have a bunch of different things going on yeah. it's like we've been working out for years and years and years like we still do the same exercises yeah it's just how we program it switches it up and you can get a little bit more intricate once you have the knowledge to do so yeah but but still it's like every it's program the same once every program has squats every yep. one of them has bench press everyone has row like yep it, it's not you don't have to complicate things it's like that's what's that's the beauty of this and also the boring part it's, it's like it's the same shit all the time yeah and it's like eh, you gotta learn how to love that yeah okay i'm trying to think of something else yeah i was just thinking i i think those are 
kind of all the ones that I could think of. The I only other thing that I would say is be uncomfortable or sorry, be comfortable with not knowing anything like uh, it, this is, it's not complicated, but it sometimes is complicated, but I think people maybe don't want to think that like they don't know anything about this world of fitness and health that it's okay if you don't most people don't there's not really a reason that you would know that just kind of cut out the like I don't know and I'm gonna ask somebody or I'm gonna listen to podcasts about it or Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to do my research a little bit more rather than just thinking you know because now you're gonna go and start all these weird habits that we're talking about (laughs) well I think like generally why it's a struggle for people is they either think this is stuff is way too complicated or they don't think it's complicated enough. They think it's way too simple. Sure. It's like, Oh, that's all I have to do is like squats, deadlifts, bench press, row and shoulder press. Like it's almost like not inspiring and intense enough and Mm -hmm. exciting enough to do anything about it. It's like, Oh, that's all boring stuff. And like, really that's the secret. It's like, that sucks. That's not fun. Mm -hmm. It's too simple to where then there's other people that's like, well, what about, you know, this, what about sumo? And what about like eating this way and keto and organic and all, you know, Mm -hmm. then they just complicate everything. And and that's what stops them. Like it's generally one of those two things or those, those are the two camps that people are in. That's like, just almost think the opposite. Sure. Think the opposite or just like ignore it and do the opposite. It's like, if you're think this is way too simple, and not worth doing it's like well still do it and do the opposite of what your intuition is telling you because like it's going to be way more better like how simple it is you're going to be so surprised of how beneficial it is and then the people that are that take it so complicated it's like that's super easy advice of just like make it really simple do the basics and just stick with that and same thing you're going to be you're going to be surprised of how beneficial just the simple basics are. It's not as complicated as you think. Yeah. And I would say f- like keep listening to our podcast cuz I feel like we can kind of clean up some of those confusion points. That's the, that's the last one. You don't the, listen to us. Yeah. You don't listen. Um and I think like our channel, I think we do already have some, but like you know, tutorials of how to do things correctly and start off on a good foot of doing it with good form and practicing. Yeah. Like think of, think of lifts as practicing the movement, not like I got to put a shit in weight on or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think we're a good one. And I also, I love mind pump the other podcasts yeah. that that would be another complimentary one that I think if you're new to this world yeah. and you want to take it seriously or do it correctly now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think they're like-minded as well. And yeah, you know, I feel like that would be one that I would recommend. I think the, the last thing for me is, and it goes with the simple, keep it simple. Part of it is, is like just, you just common sense a little bit. It's like something seems a little too good to be true or mm-hmm. you're making it too complicated. It's like usually your common sense will, will take you to where you kind of need to go. Yeah. So if you see somebody doing, walking handstands and walking around the gym on their hands it's like you maybe they're like yeah i don't think we need that necessarily <laughs> need to do that to be healthy right I'll just do my boring deadlifts and not look as cool as them but like this is more you look cooler and common sense when you actually well i guess maybe they think just that's maybe a different thing that they're doing they just want to be really good at handstands well, and they're getting different. good at like practicing that and they're practicing a skill and they're getting better at it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I would just say just try to stay open. Try to listen to the correct people because there's also a lot of random shit out there. That's why I would suggest us and Mind Pump for yeah. another one. Um, yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Bye. Bye. <laughs>